All right, welcome to this uh, new video, which will be about the making the pounds. So uh, I'm gonna demonstrate making a pound that will look uh, just like that. Actually, I already made uh, made one. Actually, I already made two of those, uh, which look, look uh, pretty similar, at least uh, similar enough to uh, to my liking. Uh, and this is the design that I will be using. Uh, before coming up with this design, I, I did make, uh, I think it was like a dozen prototypes. Uh, started with, uh, let me just show you the, the first one that I made was out of another type of wood. Uh, this is the first, the very first pond that I turned on this, uh, on this slate. Uh, it was a little bigger uh, and uh, it was pretty much similar but uh, it was a little freestyle let's say uh, and it was too big anyway so uh, and by the way let me just talk a little bit before getting started about uh, about the size of the pieces uh, this grid right here is, uh, is the exact same size of the board that I have uh, that I, I showed uh, in the last video and uh, the idea is that I want to make my pieces so that they they fit somehow on, the, on my board and uh, the size of, uh, of the pieces is really important to me because uh, when the pieces look too big or too small on the board uh, it just doesn't look good so I did a little research online about sizing my pieces according to my board and uh, one thing that I came across was an article uh, I, I don't remember the exact website where I found it but it looked really you know really good and what they were saying is that the size of the pieces should be so that just like that you know two pounds should be able to to fit on one square uh, I know that some other uh, some other formulas are, some, are talking about four pounds on one square but I think that it makes the pound a little too small so you see that my pounds are a little too big to fit four. I don't. I only have two right now, but four would not fit. They would overlap with the the um, the squares around the, the square where I try to fit them. So, mines are just. I think it's pretty much exactly two pawns on one square that fit diagonally. So this is the size that I think will look good. Uh, the pawn look pretty nice on, on one square. I don't have the, the actual board here but they, they look great, I like the look of it and according to the same formula uh, they also state the size of the king. Uh, I don't have the king right now but they say that uh, for, for the same formula the king should be uh, about between 75 and 80 percent the diameter of the king should be 75 to 80 percent of the, the, of the, the, the square. So, my squares are 50 millimeters and uh, this design right here that I'm going to be using states that the king, the base of the king should be 39 millimeters which will make it 78% uh, of my squares which is really good actually according to this formula and uh, the last the last thing that, uh, that the article was saying is that uh, for a king to look nice it should be the base diameter should be about 40 percent of the height of the king uh, and this is pretty much what i have here because this king is 39 millimeters wide at the base and it stands 95 millimeter high so this is uh, i don't have the exact uh, the exact number but 39 out of 95 will make really close to 40 percent so this is the size that I'll be using and uh, I have this sheet right here which will be my uh, uh, my reference uh, because it is uh, it is scaled to it is full scale actually the pieces will be just this size just like my pawn right now let me just put it here is the actual size of this which is printed of this sheet on this sheet uh, maybe I can raise it a little so you can see better uh, you can see that the pawn fits right here. It, it's hard to show on the camera, but it is pretty much the same dimension that is on this, on this sheet. So this is what I'll be using. So now up to making this 
this little pond. Uh, let me show you the steps to to go from a piece of wood to this uh, this pond. So first thing I'm gonna go through. The next step will be about uh, cutting some wood to dimension because I, I don't have the wood right now. To my calculation, those nine one foot long pieces of wood, two by two, should be more than enough to uh, to turn all my pieces. So uh, we'll now get to round those uh, those pieces of wood and uh, then start wood turning them into pieces. And uh, like I said earlier, the rosewood that I ordered was already in this uh, in this type of, of, uh, of format so this is already cut to the dimension so and uh, now my maple is at the same stage so uh, next step will be to uh, make it run Okay, so I'm done. The idea here was just to uh, to have it roughly round. Uh, it's really not too bad, but I didn't even care right now about the having the right diameter or anything because uh, I'm gonna reduce the, the diameter of this thing to make the piece. Uh, it's large enough. Uh, it's already uh, actually it's it's uh, it's bigger than the pieces are gonna be. So. Uh, Next step will just be about uh, cutting this uh, this little this big dowel to to length. Uh, I will uh, cut one and I will cut it in the in the middle so off camera. And when I'll get back, I will have uh, a piece long enough to to make the pond and to continue the process. Okay, now I have this uh, this piece cut to length here. Uh, this is gonna become my new pond. So. Uh, First step, I'm gonna chuck this piece directly in the scroll chart. Just right like that. And uh, secure it here. And then I'm gonna just uh, rough it a little bit and you, you use this moment to uh, to drill the hole in the bottom of the piece. So uh, to, to put the weight later on. So I position it like that. And uh, I will go on and use 
this uh, this drill chuck right here. Uh, first, I'm going to drill this, this smaller hole for for the screw later on. I will show you in a minute, and then I'm going to use this Forstner bit to uh, to to drill uh, the hole that will hold the the weight later, which will, are going to be pennies. So let's do it. Now that the hole is, uh, is bored at the bottom of the piece, let's just uncheck this. You can see the hole right here. It's going to be just fine. And uh, now it's time to introduce this, uh, this little jig here that I made, which is uh, I was inspired by uh, some, uh, some other people on YouTube who made this kind of stuff to hold the piece together. So. Uh, this is just a piece of wood that will I rounded that will go through the scroll chuck right here and uh, this uh, this smaller part here fits the the diameter of the hole that I just drilled so I'm just gonna make sure that this hole is clean there's no dust in here and uh, I'm just gonna go on and screw this just like that Okay, so it goes snugly a little at the bottom. Uh, I will go on and use a screwdriver to, to secure it firmly. Okay, now it's it doesn't have to be too too snug because uh, I had this piece of wood a break at some point where, when it was too too hardly screwed. So it just it has to be uh, hard enough not to loose, loosen while turning but not too snug and I wrote those numbers right here uh, they correspond to the numbers of my of the jaws on my on my chuck uh, because I want it to be at the same place that it was when I, I did uh, make the jig so that I'm sure it goes dead center every time just gonna, just gonna position it right here secure it like that and now the piece of wood is uh, Zeldin place. I will be able to. The, the hole at the bottom is already done, and I will be just a minute able to uh, to make the whole piece without removing the piece of wood. So it will be just just like that. So let's do it. Let me just reposition the camera so you can see you can uh, you can see better what I do. And uh, next steps we are gonna just just gonna be turning this piece. Alright, so first step is going to be reducing the diameter of this piece so that it fits uh, the base of the palm. So, I'm going to be using. Uh, uh, first, I'm going to be using the parting tool to reduce this very bottom part uh, to the right diameter, and then I'm going to use uh, the roughing gouge to, to reduce the rest of the part. Okay, now the piece is uh, is almost the right diameter. So uh, right now I'm gonna make a few marks so that I can continue to work. Uh, first mark is for the the little line here, and uh, the other ones are gonna be 33, 41 and uh, 56 in my case and uh, by the way just want to mention that I made this jig so that 
uh, when my ruler rests on the on the bottom of the of the jig, uh, it matches the the zero matches the start of the piece, so it's easier to uh, to uh, to use the ruler like that. So let me just mark. So now you can see that the marks uh, are going to fit the, the ring and the ball. So the, the piece should look something like that. You know, it's just a rough design, but gives the idea of, of uh, what are going to be the next steps. So I'm going to start by working on the bottom here. So, as you can see, the bottom of the piece is uh, beginning to to uh, to form, to take shape. And uh, I don't know if you can see right right here, but I use the technique that I use a lot is that I just eyeball the piece right there, like you can see, just uh, just here, uh, so that the profile fits uh, the the other piece. So. I don't know if you can see enough on the screen, but uh, I use this technique a lot. So because this eyeballing just proved to to work, and uh, so I'm quite happy with the look of this bottom right now. So I'm gonna continue and uh, work on the top part. So I'm gonna use the parting tool to reduce this part and this part so that they fit the diameter of the ring, the ball. And then I'm gonna cut off the the remaining wood at the top, and uh, for, to finish cutting it, I'm gonna use this tool right here, which is just a little saw. So I'm gonna use the parting tool to reduce it to smallest as possible, and then I'm use this saw to cut it off because uh, uh, going all the way through with the parting tool is not a really good idea because it makes uh, it tends to break and, and mark the wood. So. Let's continue. Now that the, the top part is uh, is reduced to dimension, I'm gonna just start uh, working uh, on the top. So first, I'm gonna just mark the center of this ring here. Uh, let's see if it's uh, it's 
at the right place. It's not too bad. So I'm gonna start working on the ring and then uh, on the top, uh, the top ball. Alright, so uh, I like it right now. I think the the piece is roughly finished. Uh, it looks pretty much like the other one. Uh, next step is gonna be sanding. Uh, I'm gonna go on and start by using some uh, 150 uh, grit paper, just like that. And uh, first sanding to make it smooth and then I'm gonna work my way to uh, 240 grit and uh, 320 grit to, 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 to for, the final, for the final finish. Okay, now everything is nice and smooth, so I'm just gonna clean a little bit and come back for the, the final step, which will be applying the finish. Okay, so uh, now I'm ready for, for the last step, which will be applying the finish on this, uh, on this piece. So I'm gonna use uh, this finish right here, which is, uh, is called uh, Shine Juice, actually. Hobie Shine Juice, named uh, for the guy who who kind of make it popular. Uh, this guy named Captain Hedy on YouTube who, who has a video about about this stuff. So it, it's actually uh, one kind of a French finish which is just uh, one part uh, one part denatured alcohol. Just, uh, this is the one that I have, I have right here. Actually it's called it's even called shellac thinner but it's 95% denatured alcohol. So this one part, this alcohol, one other part is a uh, white shack, uh, stuff like that. And uh, another part is a uh, boiled linseed hoy. So I just mixed uh, one third of each of those uh, ingredients into this little bottle right here. Uh, shaked it very well and uh, it gives this, uh, 
this stuff, which is uh, appears to be very popular amongst uh, at least amongst the the online word turner community. So uh, this is a friction finish. So I'm just gonna apply it uh, directly on the wood using this little brush, and then uh, rub it using this uh, paper towel. By the way, I always use paper towel. Ne never never use a rag or anything because if uh, if the rag gets caught in the in the turning late it can uh, uh, things can go pretty bad so paper towel uh, a, lo a lot uh, a lot safer so let's go on and apply this stuff left now is to remove this piece from the chuck and just uh, look at it so remove it like right now I'm gonna use the screwdriver to unscrew it a little bit so it gets easier to remove All right, here we go. My just newly uh, made pawn, and let's compare it to to the one that I had, and it looks pretty pretty much the same. So I'm pretty happy with this new pawn. Uh, looks nice. It's uh, it's really close to the original actually. So and I really like the finish. So. I'll see long term, like I said, but uh, so here it is, my new pawn, and uh, I'm sure you can't even tell which one was first. So let me just show you to, to finish. Let me show you uh, a rosewood pawn that I made. I, I already made a dark one, so uh, here it is. It looks really nice. Look at this finish. So I applied the same finish to this pawn, and they look pretty much the same. As I said, I, I did this one using the exact same technique that I just demonstrated. So, so that's it. Uh, now I will just uh, have to make uh, more of those uh, until I have eight dark ones and eight. Uh, uh, white ones so that I have all the pawns needed for my whole set. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I will be making some other pawns in the next next days and uh, the next video will probably be about uh, making the rooks for this chess set. So uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, see, see you next.